161 in the hymns of Zion, what a friend. 161 in the hymns of Zion. Three nineteen in the hymns of Zion, I need Jesus. Three one nine in the hymns of Zion.
We'll switch to the Zion's harp and sing 238, Desire for Jesus. Uh, for these last three songs, let's stand and sing these. Uh, Zion's harp 238. One thirty one, one three one.
Well, good morning. I want to greet each one in the love of Jesus, our Savior. It's good to be here. Good to see visitors. Um, just never know. In the summer, summer's a busy time. Three of the ministers from Champaign are, are gone today, traveling, vacation, whatever. But we have a nice, uh, nice group gathered today and just look forward to the day together. Thankful God has provided Brother uh, Scott Mangers from Altadena, and uh, he's with us, and look forward to him sharing God's word this morning, and just as I know I don't have to tell you, but everybody, just keep praying for God's presence and power and blessing on the day. Good morning, everyone. I also greet you in the name of our Savior. It's good to be here. You know, for me, this is home. And I, just back for a quick weekend, I was uh, at a class reunion event yesterday. Went to school at St. Joseph Ogden High School. I know we have some families that live that direction. And boy, reunions are pretty fascinating. I have a snapshot of time. You know, there's some people that I've kept in contact with that I've, I've seen in the last few years. And there's a few people I saw yesterday that I haven't seen for a long time. And uh, some people haven't changed much. Some have changed quite a bit. And then uh, I come to church here. It's not so different. There's some people, you know, yesterday I met some spouses who I'd never met before. So there's many of you I've never met before. Here we are today in church in Champaign. And there's some people that I see in the audience that I've known for a long, long time. And it's good to be here to see you today. You know, I'm kind of, I don't feel like I'm an emotional person, um, but there's some heaviness, you know, in the air. Um, I think a lot of us are aware of, of the recent tragedy in Roanoke, right? Um, and a young man was laid to rest this week there, Seth. Um, I've heard, you know, of a, of a recent tragedy in Ohio uh, with a young man and a lawnmower. <clears throat> and then yesterday, uh, for those that don't know, um, there was a a brother in the Peoria Church, um, a, a very good friend of mine, Aaron Klopfenstein, his father, Cleve, um, after celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary the day before, um, it's called home in a tragic accident. And that's tough. You know, I, I've opened here, we're going to read a psalm together, and uh, Psalm 18, the heading here says, God's perfect way. And as we process life together, you know, I've heard some really powerful things in the last week, not knowing what was going to happen yesterday um, from, a, from a chaplain slash paramedic in the Roanoke situation um, and uh, some other recent sermons I've listened to. Um, and there's a reason for that because these, these sermons, these words share, these encouraging messages, they come from one place. They come from God's word. And so whatever you're Yesterday was your week, whether it was good or it was bad, um, it doesn't matter. There's a good place for us to, to be on Sunday, and there's a good thing for us to do, and it's worship. And if I could think of, you know, now what, right, two things to do, two action steps uh, when you're looking at tragedy in the eye or uncertainty, I think one is to go to God's Word, and the other is to connect with, with other people. And so... Uh, pray that God will bless that today <clears throat> as we do that together, and I'm, I'm pretty confident he will. I'm pretty confident he will, so please continue to pray for the Holy Spirit. So we have here Psalm 18. Maybe we'll read a few verses, a Psalm of David. David writes, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. We'll stop right there for now. 
the first six verses. So here's a quick question. We'll think about maybe what David was doing here when he wrote this, but a, a quick question. Which words stick out to you in the text? Maybe just take a moment and, and look at it again. There's really quite a contrast in the flavor of the language used here. And it kind of depends on the day and the time for me. You know? So as I just read it now, it was maybe equal, I don't know, but you, know, you see words early <clears throat> that are pretty strong. You got love in there, you got strength, rock, strength, trust, salvation, praise. Those are some of the first words in the early verses. But then, keep reading, you got sorrow, hell, snares of death, afraid, distress, cried. And David had a way of writing that kind of really captured the human condition, right? The human emotion. They called him a man after God's own heart. I'm honestly not sure. Let's see here. I can cheat and look at my Bible heading here. Um, you know, David had some ups and downs in his life, right? And so here it seems to be when he was fleeing from Saul. And so what a strange time, right? Uh, where he knows he's going to be king. There's an existing king ahead of him. A man that he served, right? Not sure if he's married his daughter yet or not. So his father-in-law, I mean, and this is a man that is trying to kill him, right? And so David with a small group of men is, is fleeing around the countryside. He's been spending time in Philistine and and the Philistine uh, territory, it's kind of scratched your head and said, what's going on here? Um, but David was well acquainted with struggle, right? And so I just, I just love how this uh, psalm starts. David understands where the strength comes from, right? The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. And Buckler, I had to look that up, um, seems to be maybe a small shield, more of a nimble shield for a, in the heat of battle versus the, the larger shields that you kind of stand behind uh, and your whole body would be behind. Um, and so it's, it's, you've, got, you've got it all, right? And so as I come to church today and worship with you, I want to cling to that promise, right? I'm going to cling to the rock that is higher than I and understand as I stand here, that's all any of us have to stand on, right? The Lord his provision, his, his strength. Um, and I think as, as we read on and, and you see words like, you know, fear and sorrow, it, fear is an interesting thing. And think about what you're afraid of. I wouldn't call myself a, a thrill seeker, but I've done a few things recently on family trips um, that have been a little bit terrifying. Um, I was with my daughter in Nevada last week and we were on this tower about a thousand feet in the air and there was a ride on top of the tower that actually went out over the edge. And it was my daughter's idea, not mine. And I just about came unglued. I mean, just, and you think to yourself, the ride has to be safe, right? There's not people falling off the tower. But your mind says one thing, and your eyes you know, they say another thing. Um, we also did, a, I, I did this, this so I, I, uh, I'm from California, and we do... Some of you are probably familiar with ACYF in, in Southern California and the Western churches. ACYF is, is more of a weekend, um, Labor Day weekend. It's at a beach in California, either San Diego or, or uh, LA area. Uh, and then in, in February, we go to Arizona. And so, I don't know, five, six years ago, we were in Flagstaff in one of these extreme parks where you, uh, you're kind of climbing through trees, right, on ropes. Well, we did the same thing in Wyoming a few weeks ago. And so I remember the Flagstaff thing being fun because I kind of forgot how afraid I was. And then I, we do the thing again in, in Wyoming, and you're, and you're just, you know, you're 60 feet off the ground, and, you're, and you're, you're harnessed in, but it's a little bit scary if you're afraid of heights. But anyway, the theme of the, the Flagstaff Prescott weekend was who are you anchored to or what are you anchored to? And so when you do that, you've you, you, you got, got a harness on, and you always have two connection points, right? And you're connected to these cables so you can, you know, you can shimmy across another line, but you have your, your safety line there. And the question uh, of that weekend was, well, what are you anchored to? I believe the verse was in Jude about an anchor uh, for the soul. And so in times, and you know, those, are, those are kind of, you know, aha, laughable moments of, of fun, right, extreme sports. Um, 
But as we go through life, and there are obstacles, right? And some are tougher than others, right? Some look more intimidating than others. Some, we kind of see them coming, and some we have no idea. I said to uh, Brother John in the restroom this morning, I said, you know, I, I think yesterday's phone call about Brother Cleve was maybe the most shocking, sad phone call I've ever received in my life. And some of you probably have received worse phone calls than that. I, I, maybe I've lived a sheltered life. Um, that's an obstacle I didn't see coming. But I go to the Word, and I actually sent this verse to, to Brother Aaron yesterday, Cleve's son, the Lord is my rock. Because when you're faced with unspeakable grief, that's where you got to go. That's where you got to go. And if anybody in the audience today is not standing on that rock, I, I can't imagine walking through life without being on that rock. And maybe it's time uh, that you take a step forward in faith and do that. Um, you know, I can still, the, the, uh, the verse there, uh, verse 3, is that round, roundabout you know, praise song. Um, and, you know, we, we sang that at, with Wilma Simpson and VBS back in the day in Champaign uh, Church. And um, that concept, uh, is, it, it, runs, it runs deep. And I'm thankful uh, for that. And I know a lot of you have sung that song for, for many, many years. Um, but you never really think about it. You know, it's got the word enemy in there. It's got, it's got, it's got some good and some bad. Um, it's got a God who's worthy to be praised, but it's got, got the fact that there's going to be tough times in life. Let's read a few more verses. Maybe I'll skip down um, to verse 18. Let's go down to verse 18 and read a few more verses. This is Psalm 18, 18. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands he hath recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, I have not wickedly departed from my God. All his judgments were before me, I did not put away his statutes from me. I also was upright before him, I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, with an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, with the forward thou wilt show thyself forward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, and wilt bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect, the word of the Lord is tried, he is a buckler to all those that trust in him. We'll finish with this verse 31, for who is God, save the Lord, or who is a rock, save our God. So again, it's just a, it's a constant theme. In verse 28, it says, it talks about lighting the candle, and it says, Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Again, David had a way of meeting us where we are. Maybe some of us today feel like we're in darkness, and, and it could be because of yesterday's tragedy. We just can't see through that, or, or maybe life is pretty hard for you in general right now financially or relationally or whatever. Um, but let's think about that concept, the whole concept of light and darkness, right? You, you can't have the idea of light without the idea of darkness, right? And so, and I don't, I don't like this, right? I, I, I think about, and I, I met with a bunch of uh, classmates yesterday, as I mentioned, and I'm a, I'm a runner, so a lot of my buddies are cross-country guys and... Um, it's a very basic principle. It doesn't even matter if it's cross country or track and field. It's a very basic principle of training. Stress adaptation, right? Whether you're weightlifting, uh, training for anything else, it's a stress adaptation cycle. And so the stress occurs, right? And so I go out and run a workout, the specific design, and adaptation. Now what's interesting, and so for me, as an old guy and running on my own, I've even said this as I, you know, I, I work at a high school now uh, in Southern California, and so I, I talk to the, the young athletes there. And so when you're an athlete and the coach is calling the shots in the workout, you know, pretty much I guess, I guess we still have free will, right? We can say, you know, coach, I'm not doing that today. But for the most part, the coach says, hey, you're going to run this far today, you're going to run this fast. He's saying, okay, coach, you do your best. And so the coach is kind of you know, calling the shots. When you're on your own, like today, my sister and I went out and ran two miles. Well, it was up to us how fast we ran this morning, right? And thankfully for both of us, it was kind of slow, nice and easy. 
through the corn and soybean fields near my parents' house. For some of life's circumstances, we have choices, right? We choose who we spend time with. We choose what we do on a Sunday morning. We, we make choices. And some things in our life, we have no choice. You have no choice who your parents were. And certain things happen in life that are just outside of your control. But what I found, and, and here we have David, and David was, was walking through a tough time right here. Um, but the question is, you know, when, when are we most compelled to call it to the Lord? Is it when things are going just perfectly? And we still say, I will call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised? Or is it when the sorrows of death come past us? Or here we have some more words. Again, I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm a word guy, and so I see words here like afflicted. Uh, I see the word, the, the word darkness stuck out to me. Froward. Um, from the wicked here. I found in my life that the Lord more often speaks to me and teaches me and shapes me in the tougher times. And I don't know why I'm surprised at, at that. Um, I shouldn't be. It's the same thing is true for me as a, as a runner. But I don't really like it very much. I'd rather it be a little different. I'd rather it be a little smoother. I don't choose many of the things that are hard in my life. Um, and yet, and yet, who is God? Save our God. Verse 31, who is a rock? Save our God. I've found that the Lord teaches me lessons in those times. And it's, it's a whole lot easier to look back on them and say, remember when? Right? Four years ago, remember when my dad was in the hospital? Right? Remember when? And it's, when it's in the rearview mirror, it's easier to say, oh, yeah, you know, Lord was faithful. And thank you, Lord, for teaching me A, B, and C through that. But when you're in it, it's a lot harder. And that's why it's so important, I think, that when we're in it, that we stay connected here, right? But also we stay connected here. The power of church. I heard a brother uh, say recently, faith is not an individual sport, right? And we were talking about the context, uh, we spent some time kind of wrestling with a little bit of theology, like trying to figure things out, and what's the Bible say when it says this, you know? And I think it's important then too, right, to connect with people. But boy, it sure is important to connect with people when we're hurting and when we need help. And we have questions that we can't answer. So I'm thankful to do that with all of you today. It's really a blessing. Let's uh, take a song break here. Really appreciate it. I, I think we'll sing out the Zion's Heart, but maybe just real quick. I, I don't think I've ever sung that song before, 319. That's, <laughs> what a gem. You know, this, these hymn books have great, great hymns. Um, so I'll sing out the Zion's Heart, but I'm just going to read the first verse of uh, 319 again. Um, I mean, I, I walked in here thinking this, and uh, somebody, looks like uh, George Webster and Chas Gabriel, one person wrote the lyrics, the other person maybe the, the melody, and those two guys got together and said, yeah, we think the same thing that Scott's going to think when he comes into church in 2022. I need Jesus. My need I now confess, no friend like him in times of deep distress. I need Jesus, the need I gladly own, though some may bear their load alone, yet I need Jesus. I need Jesus every day. I need him in the sunshine hour. I need him when the storm clouds lower. Every day along the way, yes, I need Jesus. What a great hymn. Let's find a hymn in here. You know, it's kind of ironic too. I, lots of reminders when I come back home. And one I got today is that occasionally, occasionally water falls from the sky. Um, in California, that has not happened in eight months where I live. So it's kind of fun to come back and see clouds and, and rain. And, you know, that, again, I don't want to be too poetic about today's weather, but um, weather and, and, and God's creation teach us a lot about life. Thinking of the song um, 236, a praise song. Let's sing together in the Zion's heart number 236, All Come and Thank the Lord.
Let's kneel for prayer together. Father in heaven, it's good to be in church today. Thank you for the privilege of worship. And thank you for the people gathered here. Men and women, young and old, who have come with a purpose to worship. Our God, our rock, our buckler, our defender. And Father, in times of good and in times of bad, we want to trust you. We want to trust you through it all. And we found in our experience that you are worthy of our trust. And we're thankful for past provision, for past strength when we were weak, for past mercy when we deserve judgment. And Father, that's what we thank you for most of all. We thank you for Jesus Christ. His death pays the price for our sin, and that through him, we can have a living hope. And life can be good sometimes. There's blessing in this life, but dear Father, we pray that our eyes are looking up, that we understand on a path toward eternity, and that path can lead to heaven through Jesus Christ. So bless us as we think about that and worship today. Thank you for song worship. Thank you for the Holy Bible that's There's plenty of copies. We've all got access to the word, and we appreciate that. And we appreciate this Champagne Church that has stood on that foundation, the rock of your word, the rock of Jesus Christ. We pray that will continue. And for each person that plays a part here, for the people that are trustees, serve lunch, Sunday school teachers, for the ministry team, people that come every Sunday and pray, just pray that you'll bless them on their walk of faith. And Father, we want to say a a special prayer for the Klopfenstein family that many of us know. Pray for Kathleen. Pray for Aaron and Kara. For Carter, Cooper, and Caleb. Pray for Jay and Crystal. And for many, many others that knew Cleve and were blessed by him. Just pray you'll comfort them in their time of questioning and grief and sorrow. We know that you're able to do it. You've done it before. And we pray that you can do it again here. And just provide strength and grace day by day. So Father, we invite you to continue with us today in worship for all parts of it. Appreciate the chance to be here in a safe, comfortable building with people that we love. We pray your blessing on the day in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to the New Testament together. book of Romans chapter 8. And it's good, you know, I mentioned that hymn that I feel like I've never sung before. Maybe I have, but I sure, sure didn't remember it. And the blessing of something new. There's also a lot of blessing in something old. That's something that you know before, and this is a pretty pretty famous chapter, and maybe even the, the book of Romans uh, is just kind of a classic place to go for what to believe, how to act. It reminds me uh, of pep talks we used to get from our coach at St. Joe Ogden, because that's really what Romans is to me. It's, it's just a big pep talk. It's, are you struggling with faith and this or that, it's like, go to, go to Romans, and, and there's encouragement for you there. So I remember we used to meet in his classroom before practice, and chalkboard days, so he'd write some things on the chalkboard, um, usually some, maybe some times from our competition, maybe the workout for the day, but just like, all right, here's, here's who you are, you know, you little band of cross-country runners from St. Joe, here's who you are, and here's what we're going to do. And man, we would go out of that room just ready to conquer the world. Um... I can even, like, I don't know if, you know, if I'm ever famous, famous enough that they make a documentary or something, that's a piece of the documentary. I can picture that part of the documentary, like, you know, some, some good old classic rock playing and like, you know, people are throwing desks and walking out of there just ready to do anything. You need me to run 15 miles today, coach? No problem. We were ready to conquer the world. And so that's kind of how I view Romans for us, walking faith. Like, you want to go out and conquer the world? Get into Romans and, and that's your pep talk. And maybe we'll skip to the middle of chapter 8, but you can hardly go past the first verse of chapter 8. Maybe we'll read that together. It's just such a great promise. 
and, and worth uh, saying out loud today. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What a promise. No condemnation. Tremendous hope. And so I mentioned it before, maybe it's worth coming back to, if you are not standing with Jesus Christ today, then you can't say that. If you are standing with Jesus Christ today, then that verse is such an encouragement. There's no condemnation on the path toward heaven. Thanks to the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, today's a good day. Right? Today's a good day to begin that journey if you have not yet. So, let's uh, consider that as we continue to worship. Let's go to verse 18. Start our reading at, at chapter 8 of Romans, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity... Not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. But the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them which are call, who are called according to his purpose. I'd like to read a few more maybe, but we'll stop there for now at verse 28. Another very familiar verse. Again, take your eyes to some of the words that you see here on the pages. It's just like the psalm from David. You, you kind of have both sides of things, right? You see... Right away we see in verse 18, sufferings. I see the word wait a lot. Don't like that word very much either. Corruption, groans, travails, kind of some, a little bit of KJV language here, but we get the idea, right? But then, flip the coin over, I see hope, I see saved, I see patience, which actually, uh, that word to me is kind of both, right? <laughs> Good and bad word. And I'm thankful for a lot of things here. Again, this is, this is a pep talk for me, hopefully a pep talk for you also. But there's some teachable moments in here, right? So I, I, see, the, I see the sufferings. And so I see, again, this idea that there's going to be bad stuff. It's going to be rough, rough times. And... It talks about them not being comparable to the glory. And I think, I, I don't know how much you think about heaven. I had breakfast with my mom the other day, and we kind of talked about that a little bit, just looking up and, and what that means. And it maybe looks different when you're in your 70s versus when you're in your 40s or 20s or whatever. But we ought to all be looking up, right? That's, that's where we're going. And we have really no guarantees of, of living until we're old. And that is really the question. We have the capital S spirit here. What does it mean to live in the spirit? What does it mean to look toward eternity? And that's a tough question to answer in a succinct way, right? Living in faith. Um, but I think a part of it is managing and working through these difficulties, these sufferings. As we do that, we draw closer to the heart of God. And closer to the heart of God, I think, keeps us looking the right direction. And you notice the word, again, another word that sticks out to me in verse 20, not willingly, <laughs> right? And again, it's kind of the creature, it's, it's a little hard language here, but, but, but us, right, made subject to vanity. So we got it, we're subjected to these things in life, 
and it's not always willingly. Some of the things we go through that are tough in our lives, it's kind of what we've brought on ourselves, but oftentimes, as I mentioned before, it's not willingly. So it reminds me, I mentioned the, you know, the whole coach-athlete relationship, and I suppose athletes you know, have free will. Well, there was one workout we did in St. Joe, so a picture of those little flag football type belts. So we'd holster those babies up, and then there was a rope, like a, maybe a five-foot rope, that would connect my little flag football belt to my teammate's little flag football belt. Now imagine that you're an undersized you know, freshman, sophomore, and you're roped to some varsity guys for a workout. Not willingly. <laughs> right? And so there, I can remember, we were at Kickapoo State Park doing a workout, and I was just hoping not to die. I mean, it was just, you know, you feel, there's, it was, we hooked to like eight, eight, nine guys, and I'm thinking, if I fall, that, that could be it. They could, you know, have to ride home to my parents. Well, you know, Scott was doing a workout, and he fell, so it wasn't our fault. But there's a lesson in that, and, and, and uh, actually a really good story happened, uh, just me, my coach, and my teammate. Uh, so coming out of high school, you know, I had my mile PR on the track in, uh, in high school, and I was a freshman, and you know, we were doing a workout, and the prescribed time for the workout was not unreasonable. It's like, okay, this is the time you need to hit today, Scott. Oh, okay, that sounds good. And then he gave me one of these little flag football belts, and it's like, what? And so I actually was belted into the coach. So it was the coach and, and my, me and my teammate. And all he said was, he didn't, he didn't act like we were supposed to run any faster than we were, you know, prescribed time. He just turned around and said, make sure the rope doesn't have any tension. That's all he said. <laughs> and so we took off, and man, it felt like we were running way too fast. And every now and then, you know, the rope would get a little bit tight, and he didn't say anything, and I, you know, I'd pick it up. And end of the day, I shattered my, and we were on grass. It was at uh, Orchard Downs, uh, University of Illinois campus. And so from a track time to a grass time, I shattered my, my best time ever by like 30 seconds. And so a couple lessons there. First of all, the lesson of expectations. You don't know what you're capable of doing until you're asked to do it. You think that you can only handle this much, and God says, uh, nope, I'm going to ask you to do this much, but guess what? I'm going to help you. Do far more than you think you can. That's the first lesson. The second lesson is the power of the mind, the power of um, the environment, if you will, right? And so with the coach there, and he wasn't really pulling me. I mean, a couple times the rope had some tension, but he wasn't really pulling me, but he was right there, right? And so as we sung, you know, I need Jesus, he is always right there. And sometimes he probably pulls, right? Sometimes we need to be pulled a little bit, and that's okay. Um, but it's not always willingly, right? Not always willingly. And as we read down here, another thing I'm very comforted by, I'm not sure if you've ever had trouble praying, where <clears throat> the grief is too much, the, the questions are too big, and you don't even know what to pray. I, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to help this person. I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to get through this. I don't know what to pray. No problem. No problem. We have, a, we have an answer for that here. Uh, it says in, in verses uh, 26 and 7, the Spirit will help, right? The Spirit helps our infirmities. For it says, I mean, Paul, Paul admits it. We know not what we should pray for. Here's the greatest apostle of all time confessing, ah, I didn't, sometimes I don't know what to pray for. And he's saying, we, we, me, the, my people that are with me, you Roman uh, church people, we don't know what to pray sometimes. No problem. The Spirit will make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And so it's not even that the Spirit gives us the right words. It says here we, we don't even know what the Spirit's really doing. The Spirit is, lives inside you, if you trust in Jesus, lives inside the believer's heart and, and does this job for us. And really key part of verse 27, according to the will of God. And that's what all this is about here. And that's something that, that, from my vantage point, I can't always see. I can't see God's sovereign purpose and everything that happens in my life, everything that I, I, I read about and I see. And that's, you know, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. There's an element of faith here. You're not going to be able to rationalize or reason through everything. I think the hindsight piece helps us a lot as we walk through valleys and we look back and say, okay, Lord, I can see you were there. That's helpful. Experience is helpful. And our collective experience is helpful, right? There's some people that are sitting in these pews that have been doing it for decades and decades, I have some experience to share with those of us uh, a little younger.
And that's why we need each other, right? We need each other. And then we can say and testify, yeah, we know it. We, God is going to work good through this. God can take tragedy and unspeakable circumstance and work good, but it's according to his purpose. And his purpose is not to make your life easy. His purpose is not smooth sailing all the time or just to make you happy in the moment. His purpose is to make you more like Jesus. His purpose is to draw you close to his heart. And he'll do whatever it takes. Right, I mentioned some of the crazy coaching antics. Uh, those had a, a benefit for me as a runner. And, and God is the greatest coach of all time. And he'll do some things in your life that you wouldn't ask for. But he's going to do it for his purpose. And again, his purpose is for your benefit. Right? It's, it's, it's the long-term benefit, the long game here. Let's read a few more verses. So which speaks a little bit to God's purpose. And so as we read verse 20, out of verse 29, it says 829, Romans 829, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. There's the purpose, conformed to the image of his son, Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also justified, excuse me, called, whom he called, he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Maybe one more verse. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Here's the question that Paul's asking, we can ask today. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So that's what he wants to do. We have an insight into what God wants for you and for me. He wants to make us more like his son, right? He wants to, we got the predestinate, he wants to call us, justify us, glorify us. He wants to be with us. And then he wants to freely give us all things. He wants the best for you and for me. And I, I hope that we can, even in difficult circumstances, recognize that and appreciate that. He has spared not his own son. I mean, so he, he, he's done everything he possibly can to do these things for us. And I, I don't know if, if, if you're uncomfortable with that word predestinate. I'm a little bit, it's like, what does that really mean? And, but I think of the, of the verse, uh, is that in Philippians? Um, I just turn there so I don't mess it up. Um, he that began a good work in us is going to finish it. I think, that's, I think it's Philippians 1. He that began a good work in you is going to finish it. And the finished product for you, and you're not done yet, you're still here. You're not finished yet. I'm not finished yet either. Work to be done, right? And that finishing, right, that refining, uh, it takes time. It takes time and it takes, uh, it takes some, some effort on his part. I'm, I'm really saying, I, I don't want to try to reason here that it's, it's, it's us, you know, we got you know, to do this, A, B, and C. There's things we can do, right? So it's a... I, I, that's a dichotomy that I really struggle with. Like, okay, what's my responsibility? What's God's responsibility? I, I had an author th uh, of a book I read one time that said, and the, the way I appreciate it the most probably, and it says, we are totally responsible and totally dependent. Right? I remember Dave Wiegand, some of you uh, remember some of the things he used to say. Um, he talked about the two sides of the scissors, you know, faith and works. And, you know, which side of the scissors cuts? Well, it's, it's both sides of the scissors right, that, that cut. And so... We have a responsibility, but I think the promises we, we see here in Romans 8 speak to that it's, it's I mean, he's, it's a very unfair alliance, shall we say it that way? You and God, me and God, it's not very, not very fair. Uh, it's not a 50-50 arrangement. Because it's got him, you know, in verse 30, it's that he is doing these things. And so he is calling you to be his child. He's calling you to serve him. And if, if so it's very logical, if he's going to call you, to be his, he's going to do all the things that it take along the way, right? He's going to justify through the blood of Christ. And then we talked about looking up, he's going to glorify you also. And so salvation we have in, in, in both the present and the future way. We have, we have the present promise of salvation. If you know Jesus Christ, you have a very present, real and felt promise today, right? No condemnation today. That's a wonderful thing. But then we also have an anticipation, right, of this future promise, this future glory. 
Because that's what he wants, right? And if he can, if, if God be for us, verse 31, who can be against us? I'm going to rest on that promise today. And as, as we close here, think about him freely giving us all things. I don't know what you thought when you came into church today, what you needed. Um, and, and hopefully the Holy Spirit has spoken to you in, in, in ways. Um, and the Holy Spirit's not done yet, right? The days, there's a lot of day left yet today. We've got some fellowship uh, opportunity. Um, Lord willing, we have a, a second uh, reading of the word. Um, so let's, let's be on the lookout. Let's have our hands open for what he might give us today in terms of encouragement, challenge, strength for whatever tomorrow holds and today. Well, I'm thankful. Thankful for the encouragement that was we were blessed with, that God used Brother Scott to share with us. We were reminded from the beginning, weren't we, when we read there in Psalms about God's faithfulness. He's the rock, isn't he? And as we continue to look and read in through Romans, as, as we were reminded, such, such encouraging verses that we read here of God's faithfulness, that there is no condemnation. When, when we give our heart and our life to him. So again, just beautiful truths and teachings that we were reminded of. That we can be encouraged by even through difficult times in life. Things that we don't, we don't understand. We were reminded, weren't we? Those are really times that God can really use to really grow us and strengthen us in our faith. I don't know about you, we all probably, in uh, Romans 8, 28, that's a super familiar verse, isn't it? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And yet Brother Scott shared some of the things that we've seen happen just in the past days, don't we? I don't know about you, but when I read this, to me what it reminds me is I do know that. I know that God's in control. I know that all things work together for good. I know that God will provide. I know all those things. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I don't maybe even feel that. But I hope we're encouraged and have been encouraged today to know, to know that God's in control. He's faithful. And just one other thought. I was reminded what our daughters get us into. Scott shared about his daughters getting him into these extreme whatever rides. Well, I have daughters too, and one that got into rock climbing a few years ago. And uh, so a couple years ago when we were out visiting, she took me out rock climbing. But what the, th the, th the thing that I learned there that is the most important that we were taught in so many different ways today is the importance of being anchored. Brother Scott shared about the two anchors. When you're rock climbing, it's being anchored literally to the rock. To the rock. That's the most critical and most important thing so that when you fall, the rope catches you, the anchor holds. That is the confidence that we can have as believers in God when we are standing on the rock, when we are anchored to Him. And we were reminded that in the closing verses here in Romans 8 because the love of God. And what's he sharing here? I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any creature, in other words, nothing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So today, are you, am I, anchored to Jesus Christ? And in closing, let's sing in the hymns of Zion, the solid rock, 99.
visiting brother to close in prayer. Brother Yoder, if you would close uh, in prayer, and also we serve cafeteria style, so include that. Thanks for the food. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day that we have been given, that we could gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ and just come to church on this day of rest that you have given to us. We're thankful that we're able to worship thee in all things. We're thankful to hear thy word, reading in Psalms and Romans, and just thinking about being anchored as we've heard many tragic events happening in the last few weeks with families that some may know and just our church body, Father, as we have seen people come together and pray and, and serve thee through this time. We are thankful that we do that through hard times and we know that this life is not going to be easy. We read many examples in the word of Job, of David, Paul, who went through many hard trials and tribulations, yet they stayed faithful. Lord, help us through these times when we see people that we would think don't deserve to die at the times that they have or tragic accidents, that we remain faithful, that we remember to stay anchored to the rock and to know that we can be led to thee through thy word and through worship. So we just lift thee up and thank thee again for this beautiful day we've had. We praise thee for the food that we are about to eat. We would pray a blessing on it. Strengthen us and nourish us through it, Lord, that we can continue to serve and honor thy holy and precious name in all the things that we do. And we bless thee and praise thee in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for the prayer. So we bring greetings from the church in Altadena, California, and a warm invitation to all to come visit us in Southern California. Are there others that would have greetings to share? Bluffton. Bluffton, thank you. Morton. Morton. Thank you, John. Roanoke. Roanoke. Thank you, Calvin. I miss that. Washington. Washington. Thanks, Phil. Thank you for the greetings. And if you're, please take Champagne's greetings back to your, uh, to your own churches. Announcements for this Sunday, our last Sunday of our uh, collection for the Brotherhood Operations Fund. Uh, this funds national church expenses that do not fall under the Harvest Call organization. Annual budget is near $700,000. Uh, this Wednesday will be our last summer Bible study on the Harvest Call topic, our journey of learning. Uh, the questions and the video link are going to be included in the email that you'll be getting. And also, the Bluffton Country Congregation is looking forward to hosting the 2022 conference on Friday, August 5th. It's not possible to attend, but you would like to view the conference, there will be a link to do that. And uh, please remember to uh, be prayerful for that. So just uh, believe that's all the announcements we have for this morning. Just uh, thank God for his, his presence and blessing, and let's go enjoy uh, lunch together.